There's been some times when, when we've all kind of wondered, maybe I made... <laughs> but but, 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 but when, you, when you're married and you go down that road, you kind of end up thinking like little Johnny Taylor used to sing <laughs> back in the 60s. See, when you're just living with somebody, you can, you can just be up and out of there. But, but when you're married, you have to give some deeper thoughts to things. And, and Johnny Taylor would say this. He would say, it's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> so you have to think about those things when you're married. See, you, you can't just get hot in one moment and say, you know, I've had enough of this. Pack your bags and walk out and just go somewhere else. When you're married, there's some deep repercussions there. In a day when divorce is reaching at an all-time high, we need to recognize that one of the reasons that there's so much divorce is that there are too many options for those who are disgruntled and dissatisfied. See, many marriages could be reconciled if it were not for some third party entering in and providing a physical haven for a fling spouse to sleep. Some physical comfort sexually and some financial support and some emotional, emotional comfort. comfort. If fling spouses had nowhere to go, there'd be less that would want to go. You see, there's something about, uh, about marriage that makes you think about the situation and want to reconcile the situation and, and try to fix the thing. And it, it gives you incentive to think about it a little longer than just packing up your bags and wanting just to, to move out because there's repercussions, not just, not just the financial piece, but there's children and all kinds of other stuff. And I would venture to say that, that most marriages uh, can, can be fixed, can be repaired, if, if people will just get rid of their hard-heartedness and, 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 and trust God and, and, and want to make the thing work. But, but, but the problem is, is that there's too much that's pulling on them from outside, too, too much opportunity. Too many people who are involved in a love triangle. Uh, we need to be careful. You know, when, 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 when you allow, um, when you uh, allow someone to come in, in, into your house um, that you're not married to, you need to understand that, that God's going to hold you accountable if you are encouraging someone to dissolve their marriage, God's going to hold you accountable for that, as, as well as the fact of committing fornication. And, and in many cases, the children's lives are a, at stake. Those who, who, those who allow a, 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 a fleeing spouse to come into their house and, 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 and to find haven, you need to ask yourself, what, what message... Are you sending to the children? When you allow someone to come and to live with you in your house and, and you have children, what message are you sending to them? How, how are you going to tell them what's right and wrong when, when what they see is you doing wrong? And, and we do not live in a day and time where we can say, you know, do as I, as I say and not as I do. Children are much smarter than that. So what message are we sending when, when we allow them to see that kind of thing? Those who would provide sanctuary to a fleeing spouse must be aware that you subject yourself to the pain such as Paltiel felt. Don't be like the woman in the opening illustration who said with regret, I'd give anything if I could go back. If I could turn the clock back to when I was 22, I, I would have told him to call me. 
when the divorce is final. Call me when you've got out of your situation. Call, call me when you've got things straightened out. Call me when you've got things unattached. Don't you be a part of driving that couple further apart. It's good advice. It's good advice. Don't, don't leave folks who are, are married and wrapped up and tied up and tangled up. Leave them alone. If you have some interest, you, you wait till they get disentangled. Don't be involved in a love triangle and hinder reconciliation between a husband and a wife. Don't be an agent for Satan to hinder the work that God might be trying to do in that couple's relationship. Don't be the one who hinders them from, from, from letting all of their former quarrels be forgotten and letting them live together according to God's love and according to God's holy, holy, holy ordinance. Don't, don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in a, in a love triangle because no matter what you think, you will not live happily ever after. Now, there is a proper love triangle that you need to be involved in. See, not all love triangles are bad. In John chapter 17, verse 20 through 20, 23, in what's called Jesus' high priestly prayer, he, he, he says, Father, I, I want to have you establish a love triangle, uh, a good triangle, a good love triangle. And, and he prays not only that his disciples might be caught up in this triangle, but that each of us who believes might be caught up as well. He, he says there, he says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through the word that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. See, the thing about marriage is when you get married to someone, the Bible says that you become one. And when that third party comes in, it breaks the oneness, if you will. Uh, but, but Jesus is saying here that, that we can have a, 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 a love triangle where, where it's the Father, where it's the Son, and where it's us, and, and it's perfectly all right. He says that, that we might be one. And, and he says, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you and me, that they may be perfect and one, and the world may know that you have sent me and loved me, as love them as you have loved me. And if you want to have a healthy earthly relationship, you need to have a healthy heavenly relationship. And unless you are caught up in a love triangle with the Father and with the Son, you are caught up in the wrong kind of love triangle. Uh, a love triangle, that's what you need to be involved in with the Father, with the Son that's glued together by the Holy Spirit. It will keep you from compromising your integrity. It will keep you from having thoughts about somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband or somebody else's significant other and, and investing in dead beat, dead in relationships. Whatever your relationship. Unless Jesus is the third member of your relationship, your life, your love, your sexuality, unless you are rooted and grounded in the word of God, you're fooling yourself to think that you're going to live happily ever after. If your relationship with him, if your relationship with her does not involve a relationship with God, then that's the wrong, that's a destructive triangle. It's a sinful triangle that will lead you down a road to pain and suffering, and you will eventually reap the harvest of sin. Don't be like the woman in that opening illustration, looking back with regret. You cannot turn the clock back. You need to have a proper love triangle, and that proper love triangle includes your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 I, I, I close with this kind of humorous illustration. 
a married couple's driving along the highway. The woman's driving, and she's doing about 60 miles an hour. And her husband, quite um, just kind of out the blue, says, Honey, we've been married for 20 years, but I want a divorce. The wife says nothing, but she increases her speed to 70 miles an hour. <laughs> he says, I, I don't want you to try to, to talk me out of it. I've made up my mind. Uh, I, I'm having an affair with your best friend, and she's a better lover than you are. The wife doesn't say anything. She just increases her speed. And he says, I, I, want, I want the house. I want the car. And she increases her speed to about 80 miles an hour. He says, I want the bank accounts and I, I want the, the credit cards. She increases her speed to about 90 miles an hour. And as they're going down, she begins to kind of veer off the side of the road and there's a, a bridge that's coming up. And she's kind of in line to hit the, 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 the barriers that lead up to the bridge. And he gets a little nervous uh, about this as he sees this coming up. But he says, now, you've heard what I've asked for. I isn't there anything that you want? And she says, no, I have everything that I need. I have everything that I need. And he says, well, what's that? And just before they hit the embankment, she says, the airbag. <laughs> <laughs> now, as they say on the commercials, you know, don't, don't, go, don't go do that at home. <laughs> don't go try that. <laughs> now, her response is obviously a bit drastic. But at the same time, it illustrates the danger of some people and the pain that some people endure and the drastic measures they will talk, take when they get angry. Many a person has been, life has been lost by getting caught up in a love triangle. Uh, many, many a life has been taken by some enraged husband, by some enraged wife, some children have been. Lots of things, there's lots of real danger about getting caught up in, 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 in improper love triangles. You, you need to be careful because some folks will go to extreme measures to take revenge. Someone today is in a love triangle where Jesus is being left out. Satan is tempting someone today. He, he got you thinking about him. It's maybe it's that man at, 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 at work on your job or it's the one that you met at the grocery store and, and you know that he or she is no good for you. And God's telling you this morning, you need to leave that thing alone. Don't get caught up. No matter how good it may look, no matter how good it may sound, you need to leave it alone. Because if you get caught up in that love triangle, you may find yourself like Palkia, living with someone else's wife or living with someone else's husband or living with someone else's significant other in a sexual relationship outside of marriage, recognizing that God is left out. And as God is left out, you will eventually reap a harvest of sin from seeds that have been sown and be assured that you will not live happily ever after. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs>